You know, one thing that really grieves me in this country is what I see that people do with their freedom. How they squander it. I mean, I don't want to be too heavy, but we, it, the freedom is the privilege to do whatever we want for good. And I just wanted to share on a couple things. Last week it was really, or last year it was awesome because Sun, or Freedom, or Freedom, Freedom Day, Fourth of July came on a Sunday, and so we had service, and then we went out to the lake and enjoyed it. This week you're all going to be with us on Wednesday, Amen. At the Fourth of July picnic, woohoo! Okay, and uh, we're going to get your boat out there, Jim. Right, my boat's going to be. You're going to have your boat out there. Three boats out there. We're going to enjoy our freedom. But I want to talk a little bit about the responsibility that, that is our freedom. Um, the, the Lord gave me this. Um, it said, it was our forefathers call to fight for and establish our freedom. It's our privilege to enjoy it. But it's our responsibility or our duty to preserve it. Right? And, and uh, Anna was talking about this, about the liberty that we have in Christ. Galatians 5.1 says, Stand forth, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Right? And it says... Um, It says in Galatians 5.13, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only don't use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. Don't use your freedom just to heap it upon yourselves. How many know what the word posterity means? Anybody know? Raise your hand. You know what? Do we not even? Are you afraid to raise your hand? How many would not raise your hand if whatever I ask? Okay. Honestly, who knows what posterity means? This scares me. And we probably would use maybe another word like our heritage, okay, or, or our, what's another synonym, um, our future generations, our descendants. When the men of God that fought for our freedoms and the liberty of this country and our liberation from the tyranny of the English, when they laid down their lives, they didn't do it for themselves. And I've told you the story before of John Hancock. Who's, I wish we had some heroes like John Hancock. These superheroes, these guys aren't real. Iron Man and all these guys, they're fake. They're imaginary. Young men, when they grew up, their dads told them stories about guys like John Hancock. John Hancock was probably one of the richest men. You know, all know John Hancock, the big signature. One of the richest men in the United States at that time. He had all kinds of business and trade in Boston. And, and in 1775, in, in the height of the Revolutionary War, he... Um, Boston was uh, held by the British and it was under siege by the Americans. And he, they took counsel and they said, if we, we need to take back Boston and if we take back Boston, we might have to destroy the whole city. And John Hancock knew that if they destroyed the whole city, his fortune was gone, right? He said, let's do whatever it takes. He, those men were not fighting for themselves. They were fighting for their posterity, right? And so when I say that it's our privilege to enjoy it, but our duty to preserve it, these guys did it for us. The freedoms we enjoy is because they laid down their lives. And I don't know if you follow. A lot of people think I'm too political. I'm just patriotic. But I don't know if you followed it lately, but our freedoms are being eroded one by one. In the last two weeks, major decisions have hand, been handed down. Although we've got millions and millions of Americans out of work, our president made an executive order to legalize 800,000 illegal aliens. Last week a Supreme Court order made a president, a president, not a president, we already got a president. We're going to get a new one in November by the way. 
And, uh, but anyways, the Supreme Court passed on an order that has never happened before that the federal government can tax behavior. And if anybody thinks because of this health beer bill, and I'm going to get political just for a minute. It's not political, it's patriotic. I love this country. I love our freedoms. I'm not ready to give them up. Amen? And you've got... I'm going to read a little, just a little bit of the, of the uh, Declaration of Independence. We've got such privilege in this country. But for the first time ever, the federal government took the authority to tax behavior. They already tax our gas, they already tax our property, they already tax our airline tickets, they tax virtually everything we do, but now they're going to tax behavior. Because if you think you're getting free health care as soon as this thing goes by, you are going to be mandated to have health care, just like you're mandated to have car insurance. But that's a state law. But it, this goes beyond that. If you do not, under this new law that just passed, if you do not have health insurance, you can be penalized and taxed. So it's like, you don't have to do it, but we'll tax you if you don't. It's kind of like our voluntary tax system. Have you ever read the tax law? It says, welcome to the United States voluntary tax. Have you ever volunteered not to pay your taxes? Or have you ever not volunteered? That's called the IRS. This new health plan is so wonderful that they haven't hired more doctors to help everybody with the free health. They have hired, I think it's about 8,000, is it? About 8,000 IRS agents to help enforce taxes to pay the bill. And so our freedoms are being eroded. This new law is going to make you buy health insurance. I'm healthy. You know, I have like this policy where it's $2 million just in case, but I have like a $5,000 deductible. You shouldn't have to buy, you shouldn't have to do anything that you don't want to in this country. This is not what the forefathers envisioned, that we're going to have a country where our government is so big we can make the people do anything. Mwah! That is not what they envisioned. They laid down their lives so we could be free under the law. The government is to protect us and serve us. It's a government by the people for the people. Amen? There's not even a soapbox here. If I had a soapbox, you guys would be... Step up here. In Congress, July 4th, 1776, the unanimous declaration of the 13, at that time, 13 United States of America. And they struggled to get those 13 states going. People, you talk about people dying, just people coming over here for religious liberty, over half of them died in the first year just from the diseases they weren't used to. So they got this little nation together of 13, and, and part of... One of their main grievances is that they were taxed and taxed by the British government, but they had no representation in Parliament. Taxation without represent, representation, you've heard of that? Taxing in tax, when, when our president starts making executive orders to tax us, we're losing our representative form of government. And every one of us has amazing power with one vote. You say one vote's not that many? We've got probably 40 votes in this room right now. Amen? And uh, you can vote however you want. But boy, if you're so uninformed to vote for what's going on right now, I pity you. And I tell you what, ignorance is not bliss. We get free health care. It ain't free, brother. It's going to be paid for by hard-working people that pay a ton of taxes. Have you heard that um, the, the cost of liberty is eternal vigilance? Have you ever heard that phrase? That's one of my favorite ones. It's often attributed to Thomas Jefferson, and I love it. The cost of freedom is eternal vigilance. That means if you've got freedom, one of that, the things that it's going to cost you is you've got to be always on the lookout that somebody's going to take it away. And that quote is not actually from Thomas Jefferson, but it's from a guy named John Philpot Coran. 
I bet you didn't know that. I know you didn't know that. <laughs> but I do. And I've got the microphone. Okay. Here's what he said, and this is so good. It is the common fate of the indolent, and, and that's old English, but it's the common fate of the lazy to see their rights become prey to the active. The lazy's rights will go away to the active. The condition upon which God has given liberty to man is eternal vigilance, which can condition if he break, servitude is at once the consequence of his crime and the punishment of his guilt. If you have freedom and you're lazy about it and you lose it, that's your punishment. Now the guys I work with, they don't use nice things like you reap what you sow and you know nice Christian words like that. You know what they have a saying? If you're dumb you suffer. Okay? And that's kind of what this guy is saying in eloquent words. If you've got freedom and you just let it go away because you're just lavishing your freedom on yourself and you're not watching what's going down, I encourage every one of you that you need to get some information. Like go out to a website like Freedom Works, Or go out to a news feed that has conservative information like the Drudge Report. I see you're writing notes. Some of you is like, we got to get to the lake. But find, I'm, I'm not being mean. I really, I love this country. I love the freedom. I want to be able to preach the gospel. What Anna shared about homosexuality today would put you in jail in Canada. That's the freedom they have. They don't have freedom to teach the whole counsel of God. This little girl in the video, she witnessed to somebody and the religion of peace that they were a part of, the husband killed the wife because she believed Jesus and she was looking for the little girl that shared the gospel with them. Eternal vigilance is the cost of freedom. If we lose it, we deserve it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which with Christ has made us free, and don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, and this is the purpose of government, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the government. That's where government gets their powers, from the consent of the government, or from the governed. And when they start taking more than that, they become out of order. When any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it or to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them will seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. They're saying when the government is no longer by the people and for the people, there needs to be a change take place. And, and then it goes on to say, it's not good to just change your government every year, you know, like some people trade in their car. But we have one vote, each and every one of us. If I hear somebody complaining about their government and they didn't vote in the last election, what am I going to do? Hopefully stay a Christian during that time. Okay? But I'm challenging each of you, get informed and don't let your liberty slip away just because we're so free now. 
right? We're so free now, but don't let your liberty slip, slip away. Here's what these guys said at the end of this, and I challenge you to, to just go out, you can just Google the Declaration of Independence. Find out what this 4th of July holiday is about, and Google this and read this, and it's powerful. It contains a list of 29 grievances they had against the King of England and, and the powers there. And they didn't just, you know, they weren't just rebellious. They appealed and they appealed and they said, hey, cut us some slack over here. We're producing all kinds of wealth. You're taxing us out of existence and we don't have any say. And they appealed and they appealed and they didn't. So I said, that's it. You know, we don't believe that you're of a God anymore. We believe that you're a tyrant. And so here's what they said at the end, and I love this. And this is the kind of heroes that I want our children to see. We might have to make some powerful stands. It says, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Wow. You know how John Hancock's signature was so big? You know why he made it so big? These guys all risked their lives when they signed that. You know why he made it so big? He said, I want King George to be able to read that without spectacles. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, Father, I pray that you would make us great men and women. God, I pray that we might be heroes to our posterity, God, the generations that will follow. I pray you'd make us great, God, even just with our vote. God, we have power. And so I just pray that you would cause us and help us to become informed. I pray that we'd have e eternal vigilance and that we'd really watch over our freedoms. We protect them, Lord. And, and uh, God, we cherish the freedom we have to worship freely, to witness to anyone freely. We thank you, God, for our Christian life that, that um, we have so much freedom in you, Lord, and God, help us to preserve it in our country. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.